All right, Ben Mang, welcome to uh, the Dog Walk presented by Barstool Sports. It's May 11th. Uh, I am joined by Joel Mobley, grocery store Joe, Batser Joe, Joey from Melrose Park. What, what, what are we going with today? You got a lot of monikers, I feel. I do, I do. You can call me <laughs> whatever you want. Um, you said my name perfectly, so I respect that, my last name at least. Does it get fucked up a lot? All the time. What, Emma Billy? Uh, Emma Bile, Emma yeah. Billy. In, uh, in Italy, they say it like perfect. They say that's like said beautifully. Yeah. Um, they say it better than I do. Really? Yeah. Well, I, you know, there's some background here. Like I, I, I we're, we're familiar with each other, I guess. Similar upbringing, similar yeah. neighborhoods. Yeah. Uh, both guys who were educated on Belmont Avenue. I mean, I would say we're friends. Yes, I exactly. Yes. I mean, I, I, yeah. I mean, we're familiar with each other. You might as well just say, go fuck yourself. Correct. Right? Yeah, no, no, no. But I, well, I don't want to, I, I don't know. I don't want to I, I, like, I would uh, say we're at the, by this right, point, we're friends. I agree. Yeah. All right, we're friends. But it was when I text you, I don't feel like, I was like, yeah, you, it's cool. Like, uh, yeah. right, good. All right, I'm on the same page. All right. We're on the same page. A lot of, a lot of uh, similar circles too. Yeah. So like a lot of people, you're a couple, how old are you? Thir I just turned 36. 36. So yeah. I'm 31. Um, and like, I'm basically friends with a lot of people who would like their younger brothers that, you know, essentially. Yeah. Well, my, um, my cousin-in-law spaghetti, you know, spaghetti mm -hmm. and he's two spaghetti's two years older than me, but he did this podcast. He's been on the show. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Did, <laughs> as you listen to his episode, I didn't listen. I have to, I have to, <laughs> Dude, too. you have to, it's funny. So if people don't know, obviously spaghetti is the laundry king. Yeah. Um, so he, we had him on. We talked some laundromat stories. Uh, blew my mind that he's just fucking. I, I don't know why that I thought like he's just taking those quarters home and like rolling them, but he just he just reuse them, which is like duh. Okay, that like. Yeah. But he says a lot of people fucking snake the quarters. Like, yeah, I believe that. Yeah. He's he crushes though. He just had a kid. Like, yeah, I saw that. Like three days ago. I saw that. Congrats to Spaghetti. Yeah. All right, hey. Before we continue, I want to talk about action. And you know what kind of action I mean. I want to talk about action in the bedroom because whether you're looking for gains at the gym or a better experience in the bedroom, there's never any shame in showing up for yourself and for your health. And that's with Roman Swipes because Roman, Roman Swipes is a clinically proven way to last longer in bed. They're effective, easy to use, and they're fast acting, but they don't require a prescription. It is the secret to longer lasting sex. Try one for yourself, uh, and I promise you, you will be pleasantly surprised on what happens when you use a Roman Swipe. Roman can ship these swipes to you in discreet, unmarked packaging, and each swipe packet is small enough to hide in your wallet for whenever you need it. They're super easy to use. Just take the swipe out of the packet, swipe it on, let it dry, you're good to go. That's it. Go to GetRoman.com slash DogWalk to get $10 off when you choose a monthly plan. That's GetRoman.com slash DogWalk. One more time, GetRoman.com slash DogWalk. Um, if you're not trying to improve in the sex game, I don't know what you're doing. You want to be putting up better numbers. Everybody wants to be better at the plate. So make sure you're doing that with Roman Swipes. One more time, GetRoman.com slash DogWalk. Go do it. All right, let's get back into the interview with Joe. Um, so yeah, so we so you grew up in Melrose Park, right? Melrose Park. And how would you describe Melrose Park if you had to explain to a... Uh, a listener I would say it's it's uh like a city suburb very mm -hmm. it's like grow I I feel like I grew up in Chicago you know we're off the 290 it's right there uh it's probably half Italian half Hispanic mm -hmm. um, a lot of Italian food a lot of Mexican food and yeah just it's like a city neighborhood of Chicago great summer fest too a great uh, the the taste the yeah. taste the taste. taste yeah it used to be better why well, wouldn't a lot of places backed out the restaurants it's just not the same anymore it used to have better food yeah yeah and that's what like you know I we'll get we'll get into food later but that's that's a big thing for you drop the pasta sauce huh yeah yeah Sundays with Joe we're actually gonna be in when's this podcast come this out? Wednesday Wednesday so be Wednesday so we're in Mariano's I think we're gonna be in Mariano's by the weekend so check us out we're in every store yeah it looks good I, I see you posting about it all the time I gotta try it it is good mm -hmm. it is because I grew up never eating um, a jarred pasta sauce because my family's Italian and it was like yeah home cooked meals um, but it is really good I stand by it okay yeah how big was that how many times did you send it back were you like ah uh, a lot. A lot. a lot it's still an ongoing process like we're working on other flavors we're doing a, a vodka sauce that we've been testing out um but yeah you have to because i mean obviously it has to be manufactured and you have to be able to scale it at a large level so yeah you gotta work the ingredients a little bit yeah but, a lot of uh, mixing and matching yeah 
Um, sorry, let's let, let's do the bachelor thing first here. I know you've told the story a million times, but you know, a million one, if you want to give me abbreviated, that's cool. But you know, we got to let the people know how this happened. How I got on the yes, bachelor? Like how, how did it all sure. go down? What year and everything? So it was uh, 2000, I think October of 2018. Um, I was walking through Whole Foods, lady walked up to me as I was leaving, um, said, are you single? I said, yeah. So what's up? You know, she's like, would you ever consider going on The Bachelor? She handed me a card, said The Bachelor. And I was just assuming it was to be The Bachelor because I didn't really know how it worked. And I was like, uh, I guess, asked me to send in an email with like some photos. I didn't have Instagram at the time. I sent in like eight photos. Asked me to send in a video. I was too shy to do it. I felt embarrassed. I'm like, I can't do this. And now you're fucking popping those off every day. <laughs> yeah, but legit, <laughs> legit, I could, I couldn't, I couldn't do it. Um, they ended up setting up a Skype meeting. Every the interviews all went well. Got casted on the show. Um, I I highly debated going because I was like, I felt I was going to be embarrassed. And yeah, like um, I went to Holy Cross High School, which you're familiar with. Mm -hmm. and, um, just like all the guys I grew up with, like no, like The Bachelor just, just wasn't a thing. So I just, um, yeah, I was worried about embarrassing myself. I was worried about getting kicked off night one, which happened. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, that's it. That's the story. But like, that's where, uh, that's what I think will be interesting with this talk we're having today is like you said, we, you went to Holy Cross and went to St. Pat's. Um, there's a big, a big fear in that, right? Like I, I, I did a comedy show at Joe's on weed a couple months ago or last year, maybe with another Pat's guy, Joe Kilgallen, he's a comedian. Yeah, no, and, I've, I know who he is. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I said on the stage, I was like, you know, Sam Mary, like, what do you, what would you say? Like, what does your buddy say when he told me you want to do comedy? And he just looked at me, he's like, listen, Northwest side of Chicago, like, you know, similar surrounding suburbs let's just say they don't respect the arts <laughs> yeah <laughs> well, it was the best way to put it like like no, no, nobody everyone will be like oh what what the fuck's wrong with like what are you doing like you're, you're a loser like you know what i mean so. well yeah like like you know you, you you hear so much about bullying but like that's <laughs> like everybody yeah. everybody i went to school with like everyone was just a bully like that's just <laughs> how it was like nobody was nice about anything like the only thing that was respectable was playing sports yes correct playing sports or working that's it like yeah. if you were like if you were in theater at our school like oh no it's a no go yeah it's a no go which is crazy i mean crazy like you know just a lot of assholes and i hope they're listening now cuz yeah. fuck you guys <laughs> i know that's right <laughs> it's, it's pretty well did you play sports uh freshman year and then I just freshman stopped. year then yeah. you were done yeah it's almost like going back to like i played sports but like i wasn't fucking a good athlete it's almost yeah. like i wish i did the theater thing now that we got this and like you could dip your hands in some more of that stuff if we like actually put some time into that you know yeah well maybe maybe we'll start maybe we'll we should uh, we get a little we'll acting start class a, we'll start a little theater <laughs> little, imp little improv <laughs> sure it'll do well um but uh all right so you, you're you're concerned about that which i get completely because like you said if you're not like like when i told them too i was like man i want to um you know my parents and everything it's like i want to do i want to do like some radio stuff you know like i like this bar stool everyone's like dude what the fuck are you doing join 399 yeah get a union job and like what do you who's who are you trying to impress man yeah you know a lot of that yeah absolutely and so at the time you were uh that's how you got grocery store joe you're in produce right yeah produce grocery store um grocery store industry uh, they actually filmed at a store that i um was part owner of um, and then the name stuck, Grocery Store Joe. And that, I got eliminated night one, but I think that nickname is why I got big because it just stuck with people and mm -hmm. people re resonated with people for some reason. And yeah, yeah, the nickname stuck and I like it actually. I mean, dude, a good moniker is key. <laughs> yeah. That's key. It dude. really is. Like, I, I say that all the time, like grocery store, being Grocery Store Joe is probably the reason I'm still going. Which is crazy to think about. Yeah. Like even with Barstool too, people hop on. It's like, what should my name be? And like, I I just went with Eddie initially, but I see the people who came up with like a good name out of the gate. And that's that's a very good strategy. Yeah. Because once you're known, you're known. Whether it's like you, you're you're familiar. Maybe you don't have an opinion on the person yet, but you're like, oh yeah, I remember that guy. But and like all my friends were like, who is this grocery <laughs> store Joe guy? What is happening? It's like, I don't know. Like, because the thing is, I wasn't even in the, like I was in the produce. I was a, 
in the produce industry for like almost 10 years. But the actual grocery stores, I, I was only a part of for like a year. Um, so yeah, it was it's strange, but whatever. Did your, did your buddies give you a lot of shit initially? Uh, no, not really. There was nothing um, like that. Everybody's, at the end of the day, everybody's cool. I think yeah. um, I was like worried about that, but only for like whatever, a day or two. But everybody was pretty much like, fuck it, you did it. Like, yeah. I would have never done that. I would have never gone on that show. Like, that's majority of my friends were just like, I can't even believe you did it, so who cares? Yeah, it's like, they, like to them, it's like well, waking up and, you know, doing produce at what what time are you getting up? They ask crack at dawn, I think I've seen you say before. Yeah, um, I used to start anywhere from, I used to have to get there between three and four in the morning. Yeah, going, that's like, that's much better. Just keep doing that, stay in that grindstone rather than, you know, go on TV for sure. Yeah. But um, so when you were eliminated the first night, was it as, as embarrassing as you thought it would be? When I got eliminated the day of, it was. It felt, I was like, this is pathetic. But then it was St. Patrick's Day in Chicago the next day. So I told um, the people that were taking care of the flights, just please get me home. I just want to go out. Mm -hmm. And I went out and I got wasted. Um, we went to, uh, I think it was Concrete Cowboy. And there was a line around the block and I walked up to the uh, bouncer and I was like, I was just on The Bachelor, I got eliminated night one, let me in. Let me right in. <laughs> I was like, great. Um, Dropping it first day. <laughs> and then I didn't really care. And then when the show, the show was about to air and I was like, ah, oh, this is gonna be embarrassing, but whatever. And my friends and my family, we all watched and we're like, yeah, hey, it's not that bad. And then I started trending on Twitter and I was, everyone's like, what is going on? <laughs> and then they cast me to do Paradise. And then that's where, like, it takes on new life, right? Because you did Paradise twice, correct? I did Paradise twice, and I did Dancing with the Stars. Oh, shit, you did Dancing with the yeah, Stars? Yeah, yeah. When was that? I yeah. didn't know that. That was in between. So my, my timeline went, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been doing this. I've been, I've been living off this reality game for quite some time. I'm trying to figure, you know, I'm engaged now. I'm trying to figure out the next show. Um, so, yeah, it went, it went The Bachelorette. Bachelor in Paradise, straight to Dancing with the Stars. They casted me for Dancing with the Stars at the reunion show of Paradise, which I was shocked. I, I was going to say no. Mm -hmm. Hated dancing, still hate dancing, wasn't good at all. Made it to the semifinals because I think people just wanted to see me, like, not be good at dancing. Dude, I didn't I'm, yeah. My mind's blown that you're on Dancing with the yeah. Stars. Yeah, semifinals. I, I, I performed every fucking episode. Okay, if you felt fucking weird and awkward doing selfie videos, I mean, how oh. weird did you feel dancing? Weird. And, and it, it's, it's very intense. It's a live audience. It gets dead silent. And the music, you hear three clicks. And then the music starts. And then you actually, like, you get in, you know. Posture. Posture and yeah. you, all that. And you just, and you dance. That was that was rough. That was hard. That was the hardest thing I ever had to do. And then I did their tour too, um, but they didn't make me dance. They just let me host. Um, and then that was I was in a relationship. The first Paradise, uh, we broke up. Then I got then I started doing this Bachelor um, podcast called Clickbait. Mm -hmm. So we do that, and then they cast me on Bachelor in Paradise again. Wow, dude! I how the fuck did I not know that semifinals too? This wasn't just a, a one and done like uh, like the Bachelor. This is crazy. Yeah, and like I remember, I don't. I'm sure your high school is the same, but like everybody used to dr get wasted. Um, like you were a sophomore going to. Oh yeah, you were oh, a sophomore yeah. going to homecoming. Everybody's drinking twenty four packs of beer and yeah. Jack Daniels and. Nobody danced. Like dancing, no, was, dude, dancing no. wasn't a thing. <laughs> Next thing I know, I got glitter and rhinestones all over my body, and I'm doing the two step. So, how rigorous was it though? Like, were you training like every day? Like, what, is it fucking like hard knocks for dancing? You, you train, you train every day, six hours a day. But you know, for me, it was more six hours a day. Yeah, but for me, it was just more the memorization of like learning the steps. I've net, you know, it's. Um, what is it? It's like professional, like ballroom dancing. Yeah, ballroom dancing. Yeah, which I never did. So wow. Yeah, that's good. And how did you like having your relationship out there, and a breakup and all that shit going through that? By the time, by the time we broke up, um, you know, you really just felt like it, it was really just a normal relationship at that point. Mm -hmm. You know, it's only it's only the height of those um, of the bachelor 
reality TV relationships, they're pretty intense at the beginning when the show's airing and when the show ends. But then after that, you could show whatever you feel like because mm -hmm. it's your own social media. So, you know, once you're dating for over a year, it's basically just it feels like you're in a regular relationship. Isn't it annoying, though, that people think like just because I saw this guy on TV for, you know, 13 hours or whatever, however along the episodes were uh, that like they know everything that's going on like and, and they just that they know everything about you? Uh, no, because those are the same people that those are the those are the people that you're that's the reason you're big mm -hmm. so if you're going to take the good you got to take the the bad yeah. and that's just how i've always looked at it like yeah sure like whatever yeah i don't care that's yeah that's the best way to look at it for sure yeah um when it comes to uh so that now you have a you have a fiance now right yeah and that was from the second season of the that Paradise? was from this, this past season yes yeah, serena so obviously like, you met her yes 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 yeah. uh-huh so obviously like two successful relationships um, are you able to spot out when it's a phony relationship? Uh, I mean, I, I mean, I have to actually be in a room with the people and, um, it, the, I mean, no, not really. No. I mean, it just, you just, I mean, you have to figure out, it's not even the fact that if it's a phony relationship, it's if the people are phony. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I just figured that happens to a degree where it's like, Hey, like, let's acknowledge the both of us this is good for our brand let's let's stir some shit up and then we'll get some followers and then let's make a fucking life out of this uh, i don't think that happens as often as people assume really it's hard that that's hard to do because there's producers on the show mm -hmm. there's you know you're constantly being questioned if you really like this person um so like to fake it the whole way through for two people to go on there and completely fake it and then um I think that's I think that's a lot harder than people think. It's a lot harder to pull off. Okay, that surprises me for sure. Yeah, because I mean I don't know. I mean I've only been on one dating reality show, but I, and my head doesn't even go there. I'm just I just go there and I'm like, well, I'm lucky enough to be here. I'm just going to be myself. If it works, it works. Yeah. No, I, I got you. But like I I don't know. Obviously, it's not reality. It's well, it's real life. But I, like like Davidson and Kardashian. Yeah. Like, come on, this is, that's got to be a little bit just to fucking be in the papers, be in the magazines, I should say, not papers, but, you know. Okay. But, right? But why? Why I, would she do it? Dude, if you're in the, I don't know if people are talking about you, like, that's what, that's how they make their living, right? Yeah, like, but does she, but if she, if she never made another dollar again, she doesn't ever have to work or worry about for money sure, ever. For sure. But I think for people like her, like the attention she craves more than the dollar. So that's you, what I believe. Maybe, maybe. So you think that's a totally? Yeah, I think it's a farce. Really? I do. Yeah. Oh, oh, come I on. Don't. I you, don't. you think that's real? You think Pete Davidson and Kim Kardashian are in love? I don't know if they're in love, but I think they're hooking up. Oh no! Don't get me wrong. Like, sure, yeah, you know, whatever. <laughs> they're doing whatever under the covers, but like at the same time, like, you know, I don't know if either of them. I mean, who knows? I don't know if they want to like marry each other, but I think they are attracted to each other and they're hooking up. Which is, I, I could live with that too, but I could also, I, I think you also kind of have to meet me halfway where like in D Davidson's brain, like don't get me wrong, he was already huge. He was on SNL, he was banging back and sale, like he was doing whatever, but at the same time, he will he will always be relevant now, right? I mean- Ariana Grande too, I don't know why I didn't use Yeah, him, so. yeah, yeah, I mean, but- Always. He also doesn't, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know either of them Neither personally. Neither do I. Yeah, so yeah. I, I don't know. I know that it doesn't matter what event, what type of celebrity, singer, actor, athlete, if Kim Kardashian walks in the room, she's the biggest person there. Yeah. How crazy is that? Yeah. yeah. That's a fact, dude. Yeah. I watched that. Um, I actually watched a documentary on uh tnt about that joe francis you ever see did you see that he's no. a girls gone wild guy no i didn't see fucking the documentary. crazy dude shit was wild i remember that so there was actually a club in melrose park where like some fucking shady shit went down with him he's fucking that guy's is he broke now yeah he's like hiding in mexico he's got so many charges against him he's like a fucked up dude he's a bad dude oh yeah, yeah. he's probably a real pervert oh yeah i mean <laughs> dude it's just girls gone wild he was filming those were high. I mean, I remember. Did you go on high school spring break? I went, yeah, I went to Cancun my senior year. So did I. I mean, but 
but you know, we're high school kids or seven, I was 17. Oh dude. Yeah. There was, you know, 16, 17 year olds there. And then you got this guy who was probably what in his late thirties, forties yeah. filming these kids. Yeah. Just like, Hey, I'll give you a free <laughs> tank top. If you take off your top, it's like, you know, and, and the thing is, is like, in a drunk girl's mind at that moment, it's like, oh, it's the best thing ever. You're supposed to be being crazy, but in the end, it's like you wake up with some scaries when you do that shit. Yeah, yeah, and it's because they sold all that as just like, it It, it felt like it was just like a package, like everything, it, like you went down to Cancun, and it was like, anything goes. Yeah, where did you, you big Coco Bongo guy or what? We went to, yeah, we did that, we went, we did it, it was uh, senior spring break, we went to, we all stayed at the Oasis. And it was like the first. Oh, I stayed there like, too. Yeah, it was like my. Uh, yeah. And I remember we we got drunk the first night, and somebody punched. I think I did, like punched or or elbowed uh, the cabinet and busted it. And then the next day there was a thing on their receipt and it said like fourteen hundred pesos. And I was like, I I just got like eight hundred dollars to come out here. Like, how am I going to pay this? I was freaking out. I'm like, I'm going to get thrown in Mexican jail. And then my buddy's like, it's pesos, man. It's 140 bucks. I'm like, all right, I can afford that. <laughs> yeah, take it easy. Yeah. Dude, same shit. Same. I mean, that fucking Oasis, too. Let me, those fucking burgers were so dry, man. Yeah. I don't know if you remember that. Yeah. I almost died night okay. one. I was ch chugging water and shit. Um, yeah, my buddy peed uh, on the side of the road. And as soon as, you know, beep, beep, you know, guys pull up and it's... Right away. It's like, yeah. hey, man, what do we got to give you? 60 yeah. bucks, see you later. Happened to me, too. I was, I remember, yeah, I was pissing somewhere they they come up they got the guns and you just like how much you give them 40 pesos and, and you keep going yeah you just keep rolling <laughs> dude why <wild. laughs> just it's, break it's so wild too i mean like 18 we weren't fucking equipped to be down there no <laughs> we were not equipped no. to be would you let your kid go at 18 no uh yeah 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 i would uh yeah i would part of the experience yeah how old of growing up how old's uh serena She's 24. Oh, okay. Yeah. So she's a bit younger than you. Yes, yeah, so I'm mm -hmm. a, uh, I'm 11 years older than her. Okay. Yeah. Nice. And it's going yeah. well and everything like that? Yeah. Everything's yeah. good. When are you, did you guys set a date and everything or no? We are talking about um, next year, end of next year. Nice. Yeah. Nice. It's so an exclusive. Good. Exclusive. There you go. Right oh, there. there. You, oh, people don't know that? <laughs> I mean, we've I've yeah, talked about all the exclusives. I've talked, about it a, I've talked about it a little bit. But yeah, I mean, we're, <laughs> as of right now, we're planning, um, we don't have a set date, but we're planning for like late next year. Mm -hmm. And so how do you, um, so now it's like the next reality show you're working on. What's like, yeah, you got it, and, but like, how, what's the trajectory? You know what I mean? Or you just kind of wing it or what? Yeah. I mean, I do, I do, um, Instagram. I was doing, um, during, uh, co uh, COVID I was doing like local, uh, Chicago food, like little restaurant videos. Um, and yeah, I got my pasta sauce that, like I said, we just got in the Mariano's. We plan on growing that. Uh, I'm in New York for the time being. I'm trying to break into that market as well. Um, and I have a, like a few things in the works that I can't really go talk. into. Yeah, I can't really go into them yet. You sure you don't want to break more news? Uh, soon. soon. Right. I'll come back. All right. All right. <laughs> I'll come back. I'm, I'm bummed you moved. I got to tell you. I think you saw the disappointment in my face when you're like, yeah, I'm moving to New York. I was like, ah, I feel like I got another one. Yeah. Because there's like no like famous people in Chicago. I, I, I'm I back and forth though. So, so, are like, you, I, you, so you still have a place here? Uh, Yeah. Yeah. Are you, I mean, you always have a place to stay. Yeah. I, I have a place to stay and I'm like, I'll be here. I usually come back once a month in New York. And so when I first did Bachelor, I ended up because of Dance with the Stars moved to LA. And that I didn't like because I was so far. Like, I flew out here at eight in the morning. I get here at 9.30. Yeah. You know, it's easy. Yeah. So I could come back and it's cheap too. Mm -hmm. The Chicago and New York flights are cheap. They're every day, so it's easy. Yeah, I mean, the it really is. I have to go to New York a lot, obviously, for work too. Um, it's a breeze. But what didn't you like about LA? Uh, I like LA. I just, it was just, I'm just saying because the, the travel, so, it's, the travel is too far. far. Mm -hmm. So like I, I couldn't go back and forth as much as I would like to. Mm -hmm. Where now I still have my my business out here that we're growing, so I'm able to come back a lot. Yeah, and so you obviously you could order it online, but right now you're going to be in Mariano's. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're in, we're still in uh, we're in other stores too, but yeah, I'm gonna just keep yeah yeah yeah. It was just, just throw one in every so <laughs> yeah. often in mid conversation. <laughs> yeah, we're going to be in uh, you know Riviera on Belmont yeah. Harlem. <laughs> You know, <laughs> just, just pepper them in. I don't mind. Okay. Um, 
but man, yeah. So you, so what was the thought process on doing the split though? Just because more opportunity in New York. Yeah, opportunity in New York. I always wanted to live there. It's a you know great food city, and for Serena's in Toronto, I'm in Chicago. So for us to find like a middle ground where we could start fresh, um, I think that was uh, the number one selling point for us. So you think you guys are there for good, huh? I don't know about for good, but for for hopefully for a while, at least a few years. Could you see yourself becoming a Canada boy? Um, I Toronto's awesome. Yeah, I, I uh, went as a family vacation, but I heard it's good. But it, I think it would be hard as far as just work related. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know. I mean, who knows? You're open to whatever. Yeah. Um, and what what were you? Uh, sorry to take this back, but what were you doing for produce? I know you said you worked at the grocery for one year, but yeah. So I um, well, initially, right when I graduated high school, I went to the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. So I traded um, in the Nasdaq pit open outcry for five years. Um, when the when the market dried up, I basically I made a lot of money and ended up blowing it all just trading stocks. And then my dad had a produce route selling produce to restaurants. So I started working with him. We built up the route. So like, you know, like the, all the China buffets we would deliver to, um, Natalie mm -hmm. delivered there. And then I got a job in the produce market wholesaling to all um, the vendors and the grocery stores. Okay. So that's what I was doing and then my buddy owned two stores, one in Atlanta and one on the south side of Chicago. And the company I was with was going under. So then I went with him and I started to learn that end of the business. So that's that's what I did. I was uh, I worked at Jewel for nine months and I was a produce pro, if you didn't know. So I got some six. What were you doing at Jewel? Uh, you know, just making sure the apples were full, you know, the cantaloupes looked <laughs> were, like. Yeah. Were you in the in the produce section? I was taste testing a lot. I was. I truthfully yeah. was, yeah. Uh, Do you know how to test a good watermelon? All right. So th I think there's various, uh, well, you'll you'll explain to me, but I was told so many different things. I was told a sunspot is good. It's all about the tap. Yeah. yeah That's like, what like I used to sell. A... I used to sell watermelons and cantaloupes. Oh, really? And honeydews, yeah. But the watermelon's all about the tap. If you hit it and it's, it's hollow, it's good. If you hit it and it's a thump and it feels full, it's it's garbage. So you want a little vibration when yeah. you hit that and you get a little, like it rumbles a little bit? Yep. That's a, have you told that anywhere else? No. That's an exclusive. Yeah. I got fucking yeah. two here today. Watermelon facts. <laughs> Watermelon <laughs> facts. Um, no, that's good because there's nothing worse than cracking open a bad watermelon. No. You want to know sucks. the best honeydew? Because honeydews honeydew? usually suck. Honeydew is so fucking but bad. But if you get the King of the West honeydews from Turlock, California, they're only in Chicago in the summer. I would say they get in around June, July. That's an unbelievable honeydew. Really? Yeah. And it'll just say it on the label? The yeah, the brand's King of the West. King of the West. Yeah, and the, and the cantaloupe are uh, peacocks. So peacock, cantaloupe, king of the West, honeydew. Yep. All right, I gotta Coming check from that California. Out. Because you're right, honeydew is the biggest just throwaway. Like they just like, we need something to make this fucking tray look full. Yeah. And they throw it in. No one's excited to eat honeydew. Honeydew is better than cantaloupe if you get the right one. Really? Yeah. But you never, you have never had the right one. Because 90% ah. of the year, they taste like shit. They have Can't, no sugar. All right, when you come back, we're going to do a fucking, we're going to do a video doing honey, doing yeah. cantaloupe. And we got to get a sugar tester too. So there's something to test the sugar. Oh, really? You yep. just like, it's like a uh, fucking, like a pea strip kind of thing? Yeah. Oh, damn. Yeah. And we had one guy, he was a big, uh, a big buyer for a big chain and he used to cut him, cut the cantaloupe. And if it, um, if it tasted good, he would buy pallets worth. So I would sprinkle a little sugar before he would walk in. <laughs> and like when he didn't see, he'd cut it and then somebody would call his name and I'd sprinkle some sugar on there and sell him. That was a good way to go. Yeah, that little was, hustle, little yeah, side I mean, hustle. Hey, it's just a, the produce game is cutthroat. So yeah. you gotta do what you gotta do. So you did those three. So you're just a melon guy. Melons, yeah. Gotcha. And then, and then um, oddly enough, asparagus. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, so it was like, um, yeah, it was cantaloupe was our biggest mo mover, cantaloupe, watermelon. Um, honeydew and asparagus. What's uh, what's got the best margin? Is that like a thing for you? Um, it it just it depends if you if you get a deal on them. Like mm -hmm. like if cantaloupe if cantaloupes are hot and let's say they're going for twenty four dollars 
per nine, so per case. Mm-hmm. You know, if you have a good relationship with the broker, you catch a deal, you get them for five bucks, the market's 24, they're good, you sell them for 25, 26. You know, there's 3,000 boxes on a on a load, Yeah, you make a lot of money. Damn. And where did you have the option to expand outside of those four? Or you're like, this, this is my corner? Uh, I mean, if I was the owner of the company, I would have, but that's what they specialized in, so that's, um, that was just, I was just like, all right, this is what I'll do. Is there a fruit that's like too much of a pain in the ass? They're all a pain in the ass. I mean, if you get like the worst, actually watermelon, when they're, when they're bad, smell, it smells like the sewer. Oh uh, yeah, they do. Potatoes are real bad. Um, I feel like avocados would not be good because they're, they're like expensive and I don't know. Yeah, and like lettuce, lettuce, lettuce could be spotty and it'll get diseased and it spreads. Ah. Um, but yeah, like the produce industry is not fun. It's hard work. Yeah. It's a pain in the ass. So you'd never go back? I hope I don't ever have to, but if the stock market keeps going lower, I'm gonna have no <laughs> fucking choice. You're, you're <laughs> sick of dumb. No, but I was gonna say that too. And like, listen, I, the, I'm sure, the, that, does that question ever like, you know, it's almost like when you're 18 or you're in college, like, what do you want to do when you're older? And like me asking, like, well, what's the deal? Are you going to wait for reality TV? I saw your face. You're like, I don't know, man. Like, you know, but people should know the Instagram game fucking pays. Yeah. Like, like I mean, that, obviously we, we talked before, like there's fucking money in that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Brands pay. Brands pay a lot of money. Do you uh, do you feel goofy doing that ever? Um, no. Well, I used to. I used to hate it. <laughs> Uh, but the truth is, like, and I'm not just saying this, the brands that I work with, I like. Yeah. Like, I use it. So I'm like, okay, like, why not? Have like, you turned down anything? Yeah, I've turned down shit. What have you turned down? I've turned down, like, I remember when I first got off the show, I got offered big money to do, like, this, um, like, nutrition, like, protein thing that everybody was doing. I was just like, I don't use that. Yeah. I'm not going to do it. I think I turned down, it wasn't... Um, some kind of vape pen I turned down because I was like, I don't I don't you, fuck with vapes. You don't smoke? No. You wouldn't wanna just become addicted for the money? No, no. no. But like, yeah, like the, the brands I work with are usually food brands um, or it's something that I actually use. So I'm like, yeah, why Why not? Mm -hmm. No, that's good. I mean, it's it's crazy how that works. So yeah, that's, that's you You could get over that very quickly feeling, feeling goofy doing it. Yeah, I mean, listen, at, at the end of the day, it's also, uh, it's hard to turn down the kind of monies that brands pay when you know what it's like to actually work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Long hours for not that much money and in hard hours. Yeah, that's key, dude. Yeah. Like you'd be, you'd probably be a huge dickhead if this happened to you at 24 or something, right? Uh, 22? I don't think I would have ever went on the show um, that, that young, age. I was way no. too insecure, and I would have been way, yeah, I would have been way too worried about what other people think. Also, I mean, you know, someone coming up to you at the store and saying that to you is like the ultimate compliment too. Saying what? That that lady gave you a card. Come on, the bash like that's. Yeah, it was. You'll always have that. Yeah, it was cool. <laughs> yeah, that was fucking sick. <laughs> it was cool. <laughs> yeah. it was, I remember. I was like, this is actually pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. No, I bet, dude. Um, Damn, so it's the timing is just wild. Like, I, how old you said you were 31? Wow. It was and 31. Your life just swerved. Totally changed. Timing. Yeah, timing was everything. Insane. Dude. Yeah, changed my life. That's crazy, man. Well, yeah. good for you. Yeah. It's, uh, it's good to see, you know, a neighborhood guy succeed. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think we're uh, towards the end here, unless you got anything else. Uh,. I'm good. I'm chilling. You're good. Yeah. I uh, now I all I can think about is getting some fucking honeydew and some cantaloupe and uh, trying to. Try you gotta to wait. You gotta wait because the honeydew is not going to be good yet. It's May. When is it? What's honeydew season? I told you, like uh, June, July. Okay. June, July. So you'll come back June, July, and we'll do a. Uh, well, let's line up a few, and I'll be like, that one's the best, and I'll see if I'll pick the best one out that you're talking about. All right. Yeah, let's I do it. I think that'll be good. Yeah, let's do it. We'll do a video out it. Also, out wait, what it. were we saying before the podcast? Oh, everybody always said, what is Chicago known for? Food. The, the not, number from, one, not, not from a, a local or from a national perspective? From a local. Well, it's not deep dish. Um, Which I agree. Yeah, it's not deep dish. I would say you get the most 
opinionated people on what people eat the most, I would honestly say hot dogs. Okay. Just because like, like obviously there's beef, but I feel like that, you know, we got some fucking awesome beef stands in our neighborhood. I feel like a lot of neighborhoods don't have that. Like locally by us, like beef is massive. I, I, I was going to say it's beef. You think it's beef? Yeah. Cause I also don't like hot dogs. Everybody has a hot dog. Not yeah. everybody has an Italian beef. Yes. But I think more people like more maybe people more people dogs. have an opinion on hot yes. dogs. But I'm just saying like something that Chicago is truly unique for is the Italian beef. Totally. Sandwich. Yes. If you're talking, that's, unique, that's what I mean. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. So I, I, I misheard you. I'm just saying from I was saying from a local like wide perspective of what is available and what people have the most opinions on. I figured to be hot dog, you know, because you could get more people going on uh, Jude's versus Superdog than you can on you know Franny's versus Jay's. Jude's you know? versus Superdog. Who do you take? I'm a, I'm a Jude's guy. I agree. He's and I'm like don't get me wrong, I like Superdog too, but it's 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 a totally different hot dog. Yeah, Gene and Jude's is the best. It's Greasy, unbelievable, but it's the best. Yeah, it's uh. It really is, and it's just the whole the fries, everything that goes with it, you yeah. know. And it, you know what you're getting. You walk out of there smelling like a grease trap. Yes. Yeah. The guys are gonna be like, look like they, you know, maybe took a shower that day. Yeah. You know, <laughs> but like that's what I want. Yeah. I want. I want that from Gene and Juice. It's the the owner of uh, Girls Gone Wild's fucking doing the fries. <laughs> yeah. Nobody knows it though. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, but it's beautiful. Like that's, I mean, that's probably like a midpoint of where we grew up too. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. um, but yeah, Italian beef and I, you know, what sucks too. Do you get upset or do you get not upset? It's not that serious, but do you get a little, I guess, irked when everyone like goes straight to Portillo's? Uh, I mean, I don't get upset, but like, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's stupid. Yeah. And, and I can't listen. I can't. I can't expect everyone to take the fucking half hour ride out to Johnny's or wherever, yeah. you know, but it's, it's just a different, like, I, I like Portillo's. Portillo's, but Portillo's also used to be great. Oh, it was unbelievable. Yeah. Portillo's was great. Yes. It was unbelievable. 15 years ago. Yeah. But it's like the, the buyout and now there's locations like back in the day, you had to fucking probably travel to go to Portillo's yeah. because they weren't everywhere. No. And when you went, you're like, all right, we're getting fucking Portillo's, you know, the you're best. passing yeah. the Lutheran general hospital and we're fucking going to Portillo's. Yeah. Here's my take on Portillo's. It's the best. If you guys don't have a decision about what you want, like if you want a beef, I want a hot dog. He wants a burger. That's the best spot. They do everything well. Yeah. But if you're like, man, I want a beef, it's like, all right, why don't you just go to Johnny's or Jay's yeah. or Mr. Beef? Yeah. You know, if you want a hot dog, it's like, why don't you just go here? That's my take on it. I agree. And I just, you know, when people, I mean, everyone, every time that people come in from New York, it's just this whole office is just littered with Portillo's bags. So yeah, you can't, you know. No, it's still good. Yes, it's still good. It's still yes. good. But it's also like I could acknowledge too, like there's a lot of good shit in our neighborhood when it comes to like little pop-up stands uh, and just like original fast food stands. Where I can admit we're, you know, a little bit of a hard on when it comes to that kind of stuff. Yeah. So yeah, I get it. Yeah. I get it. I don't know. It is what it is. We'll uh we'll do the honeydew next time you're back. Um, thanks for coming in. Of course. Thanks Go for buy me. Go buy the uh Sundays with Joe. Sundays with Joe. Sundays with Joe. Pasta sauce. Mariano's give it a shot. You're doing pasta. It's you know, what it's dropping now. It's, uh, it's not pasta season, Joe. It's not pasta season. Actually summer is the opposite of pasta season. <laughs> yeah. But um, it's still good. It's and, still good. And it'll last for a while, a few years, so keep it. <laughs> Save it. Yeah, <laughs> but no, Mariano's, there. that's where it's going. And what's, uh, anything else? Anything else to tell? Uh, no. Sundays with Joe, my Instagram's Joe Mobley one um, whatever. If you want to follow me, follow me. If not, don't. <laughs> yeah, give him a, respond to his stories when he does these ads. Be like, dude, what the fuck you doing? You know, <laughs> <laughs> just, just give him shit on those. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right, that's it, everybody. Thank you for listening. Thank you to Joe for coming on. Uh, we'll see you all tomorrow.